What day is it, you ask? Why, of course, it's Happy Rusev Day. Is it, though? Is it? If you want a perfect example, a, dare I say, personification of exactly why the WWE needs to damn get rid of the brand-exclusive pay-per-views, get rid of this incessantly idiotic brand split, I present to you WWE Fastlane 2018. I looked at the card for this show, and I said to myself, Oh my God, this feels like a mediocre to bad SmackDown, let alone a mediocre to bad pay-per-view. And of course it does, because Road Dog sucks. Hashtag fire Road Dog. But seriously, you look at this card, the six matches that as of now are announced for the show, and you wonder why anybody would actually pay money to see this in person. You've got to be insane, incredibly bored, or have a never-ending desire to fuck off your money on mediocre forms of entertainment. Because when it comes to mediocre forms of entertainment, this show, I'm sure, is going to fit the bill. Good God. I can't believe I'm even doing a preview and predictions video for it. And I'll be even more surprised if I actually have the discipline Sunday night to sit through three hours of it. Now let's talk about the announced matches on this show so that way you can get an understanding of just what the hell I'm talking about. Women's tag action. Naomi and Becky Lynch versus Natalia and Carmella. woo This is hot garbage. What are you going to do here? Have Carmella get pinned? Whoopity-doo! What does it mean? It doesn't mean a damn thing. The only thing that should happen on this show involving the women is Carmella finally cashing in because that way you can have Asuka come over, challenge her, squash her at WrestleMania. It makes all types of freaking sense. Just do, do, do it! Seriously, why even bother having Carmella have a match on this show if you're going to have her cash in? And if you're not going to have a cash in attempt, then what the hell are you doing? It's Happy Rusev Day, and every day is Happy Rusev Day, because that's what the damn shirt says. But I know about this. Rusev. Not on TV for several weeks, because of course, that's what you do with the guy that has organically, naturally gotten himself over, in spite of anything the WWE has actually done, and in spite of the fact that they tried to sabotage a guy like him, even though they don't sabotage anybody, according to Cody Rhodes, because fuck Cody Rhodes, by not putting him on TV. Now they're going to sit there and throw him to the wolves against Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, a logical mind might sit there and say, well, you don't want to job out your Royal Rumble winner at the pay-per-view before WrestleMania. On the flip side, you can sit there and have a Rusev win via interference from Alana and or an Aiden English. And that way, once Shinsuke won the belt, you would have somebody that would have a reason to potentially have gripes with Shinsuke being the champion. And oh my God, you have a feud. Does anybody think that's actually going to happen? Shinsuke is going to be kind of lazy. The whole time going to be looking and it's like, why isn't Rusev getting the push? Because, I'm sorry, in a WWE context, Rusev is the better talent. Believe it. Happy Rusev Day! One really cool thing about Fastlane is it's forward thinking. We've got a Bow Wow Brawl for All. You might know it as a SmackDown Women's Championship. I know it as the Bow Wow hoo, 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 hoo. Brawl for All. Ruby Riot and Charlotte. All types of dog factor here. Like, we, we need to have a talk for a second, people. Fellas. Fellas. Understand we might have different taste. Understand we might have different perspectives when it comes to the ladies. But Ruby Riot is god awfully ugly. Let's just call it as we see it. And what's worse is the WWE doesn't play up on that ugliness by having her wear paint or do some type of over-the-top gimmick that would actually really work and actually really get her over instead of doing this absolution knockoff copycat bullshit on SmackDown. And then, of course, you've got Ric Flair's daughter with a penis. Ric Flair with a penis. Talking about Charlotte. She's going to beat Ruby Riot like she beats her men. 
And it's sick to think that any guys would actually beat their meat to Charlotte. To me, the only logical conclusion in this match between the two Bow Wows is to have the dude with tits Carmella come in and cash in and become the SmackDown Women's Champion. Otherwise, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I look at this United States Championship match. You've got Randy Orton. you got Bobby Roode. And it is a perfect example to me of why so many SmackDown viewers and WWE fans in general are going to social media with the hashtag Fire Road Dog stuff. Because to me, this shows you what happens when somebody is in charge of producing and writing the show and they don't know what the hell they're doing. And clearly in this role, Road Dog does not know what the hell he's doing. You look at these two guys, like... Has Randy Orton ever been less interesting? I mean, he's never been incredibly entertaining to me anyways. He's always been kind of boring as bricks. But even bricks look at Randy Orton now and say this dude is apathetic. The character is lazy. The performer is tired. The performer is boring. The performer doesn't give a crap. It's kind of like that Jay Cutler, no fucks given look with similarly... None of the redeeming qualities. Just no redeeming qualities whatsoever. And then you've got Bobby Roode. <laughs> Glorious! I wish I could say, I wish I could say, his run on SmackDown was actually glorious! It's been anything but. You take Bobby Roode, you make him boring. You take Randy Orton and find a way to make him even more boring. Whereas Randy Orton is at a stage, a point in time in his career where he's not being forced down people's throats anymore, and with that longevity and that name recognition, he should be a respected type of guy. He could do some of the most entertaining, fun stuff he's ever done. Like, I look at this United States Championship match, and I can't imagine I'm the only one that looks at this and says, Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, two-man heel power trip tag team. Especially with SmackDown, knowing they always go back to the same two tag teams wrestling all the fucking time, see this show for yet another example, it would give new life to Randy Orton, it would be a new direction for Bobby Roode, a much better natural fit for Bobby Roode, they could do big things with these guys, especially if you have a babyface champion on the top of SmackDown, you could get to that point where you have Randy Orton versus AJ Styles for the title, you could get to Bobby Roode versus AJ Styles for the title, instead you've got these two guys going out there and mediocring it up in a crappy storyline for a crappy SmackDown mid-card title. Because, of course, Road Dog ruins everything, WWE ruins everything, and yes, by the way, hashtag fire Road Dog! We've gotten to the point in WWE, and I think wrestling across the board, but specifically WWE, where even if something is a good thing, the company will run it into the ground so much that they continue to give it to you to the point where you really resent it. And that's where I'm at with the New Day and the Usos fighting again for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Again. I understand it's not like it used to be. I understand that our attention spans are shorter. Our patience is thinner. But Jesus Christ Almighty. How many times do the same guys have to wrestle in the same matches, in the same ways, for the same stipulations? Yes, you'll have the ring nerds talking about the matches are really good and blah, blah, blah. But at some point in time, the madness has to stop. Enough is he fucking enough, and it's time for a goddamn change. Why can't Rusev and Aiden English be in the frickin' SmackDown Tag Team title picture? Why not? Like, legitimately. Why the hell not? At least it's a somewhat different opponent. Like this is one of these things that's becoming the tag team equivalent of Cena versus Orton. They're going to wrestle in all types of different ways and every other way except one-on-one -on -one or team versus team, man versus man at fucking WrestleMania. And by the time you would get to WrestleMania, unless you did some ridiculous ass 30 minute Iron Man match between these two tag teams, because that's what we need after seeing these guys wrestle so many damn times, is another long, even longer fucking match. What the fuck are you going to do with these guys at Mania? And why the hell at this point in time would I care for this match? So those of you desperately looking for something 
that gives you something on the show, you'll probably forget all that cock garbage for 15 minutes. You'll get sucked into this match. And I ain't doing it. Because this is stupid. Let's figure out some new crap. And oh, by the way, again, because of crap like this, hashtag fire road dog. We really should start calling SmackDown Live retarded raw. Because that's what it is. It's Road Dogs Retarded Raw. Live on Tuesday nights. And to me, it's got a more catchy tag to it than SmackDown Live. What gets you more pumped up? SmackDown Live or Road Dogs Retarded Raw? Well, because it's got Road Dog in the name. That immediately eliminates it from consideration. But Retarded Raw fits. Because it seems like they just copy and paste a lot of the crap Raw does that's already not good, and they find a way to make it even worse because, again, Road Dog sucks. Hashtag fire Road Dog. You've got on Raw, Paige and her group, and they call it Absolution. So you got a pale, ugly bitch leading two others. So then, as Don Tony pointed out, you got the Spaceballs uh, stunt double equivalent over here in the Riot Squad, Ruby Riot. Ho, 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 ho! And Liv Morgan, who's not Mandy Rose, and this bitch, who I can't even fucking remember her name because it doesn't fucking matter, isn't quite the other bitch. It's like they got the B retread garbage ass version. And they do the same crap of them every week. And then I think back to that long ass, almost two hour long gauntlet match on Raw, where again, why care about the match on the pay per view when you've seen these guys go even longer on the TV show? Well, here we go. You get five of the six guys that are in the WWE Championship six-pack challenge match. They're freaking wrestling the week of the pay-per-view. So, again, not only when you look at it and you see there, there's guys like fucking suspect ass. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Boring-ass balding Baron Corbin. Cammy. Kevin Owens at least has some redeeming qualities. The only redeeming quality for freaking Sami Zayn is... The Uber driver capabilities. He's a great designated driver, people. A great one! Perhaps we'd say, brilliant! But Jesus Christ, you look at this and you say, Ziggler, no redeeming qualities. Especially for being in a main event world title match on a pay-per-view. Baron Corbin, same thing. Sorry, folks. Sami Zayn, same thing. Kevin Owens, a couple of them, belongs in the mid-card. The only two guys that are really sniffing and scratching the surface of being guys worthy of a main event spot, it comes back down to John Cena versus AJ Styles. And the whole thing about John Cena and his path to WrestleMania and he doesn't have one, give me a fucking break, does anybody buy that? And ultimately you still look at this match and you feel like unless they make a change at the 11th hour, 59th minute and 59th second in terms of their creative decision making, it's going to be AJ Styles that finds a way to retain and it's going to be AJ versus Shinsuke at WrestleMania. Like, did we need to have this six-pack challenge match? Fucking no, we didn't. And they couldn't even get this right. Like, Elimination Chamber had seven people, so SmackDown's got to come with six and have it be six worse people collectively than the seven that were in the Elimination Chamber match. And the story is even more idiotic. And you look at idiotic stories. Look at this cami crap. Like, what the hell's going on there? And by the way, for those nerds, those geeks that want to sit there and actually see these guys wrestle at WrestleMania, fuck you! How many times do we need to see these assholes wrestle? And then furthermore, if it's not building to that at WrestleMania, like if you're just going to throw them into the random-ass Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, then what the hell have you been wasting months of television time building up to? Everything about that is stupid. Everything to me about this freaking match is stupid. There is nothing to really latch on to because it's stupid. Because Road Dog is stupid. Hashtag fire Road Dog. And I fully expect, unless people completely get drunk, stoned, and off their goddamn rockers come Sunday night, one of the top trends on Twitter, behind Fastlane perhaps, will be hashtag fire road dog. And when you look at this hot steaming pile of garbage that is this card, why would you think anything other than that? This sucks. I'll be glad when these brand exclusive pay-per-views that end. Be glad when the brand split ends. Because when you look at this shit, it just shows you 
the lack of talent, the lack of creative juices in the company, and the fact that they have no business running shit this way anymore because they can't do it right. This sucks. Yes, I now realize I need to watch this show Sunday night. I have to watch this show Sunday night because as the saying goes, I watch so you don't have to. And if for no other reason than to help keep the sanity and bring some balance to the force of stupidity that is the entirety of us as wrestling fans, I'll watch it and I'll review it. That's right. Because remember, OTR Central is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And Happy Rusev Day is great and everything, but what about Happy Schleg Daddy Day, damn it?